Hello, this is Sean Abrams, and welcome to my talk. Uh, this talk is presented for Botany 2020 Virtual Conference. Um, I'd like to start by acknowledging my collaborators, Chris Peers and Eric Shans, as well as my funding sources. Uh, and the paper uh, for the research I'm about to present is all available uh, online now. So glucosinolates or mustard oils are what we often think about in terms of condiments, so mustard and wasabi, but they also are found in some of our major um, crop species worldwide. Uh, not only do they play a big part of taste um, for us, they also do that for um, insects as they're a primarily defense compound. Um, but some insects have developed a, uh, a, a denitrifying or a, a a neutralizing ability for these compounds, allowing them to munch, 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 munch. So these plants have had to evolve uh, more and more complex glucosinolates. So when this happens, you get this rupture of the cell, and so this is the glucosinolate compound, um, and it hydrolyzes and creates uh, an isothiocyanate iso anion. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, this where the diversity comes in is in this tail here. And so you have a bunch of different chemical tails that can confer different um, uh, chemical actions, some that taste good for us and some that might give you an ulcer. Uh, so it's a wide diversity. Um, diversity in glucosinolates is actually um, very tied, as a key innovation of the Brassicales, is very tied to diversity in species as well, uh, where you see um, and in this Edger paper in 2015, they showed some key shifts in glucosinolate diversity were also associated with whole genome duplication events um, in the order's history. Um, but when it came to those novel structural elaborations that I talked about earlier, um, they didn't really identify a whole lot going on with that because they were mainly looking at the core glucosinolate structure. So when I say that the, for the formation of the core glucosinolate structure or this part of the pathway, it being broken up into maybe three chunks. Um, they were looking at the innovations caused by gene duplicates in that case. And so you can kind of think of this uh, in terms of assembling a car. So this is maybe the, um, the actual assembly of the vehicle. Um, but a lot of the QTLs, so the, uh, especially the population level diversity of uh, glucosinolates is controlled by um, AOP. So AOP, uh, is fat is can be think of as like at the end so maybe the paint job on the car um, and then it, it, in MAM so this MAM gene or um, this uh, MAM locus also known as the along locus uh, this is involved in chain elongation so this is maybe prepping the metal that goes into the car and this is where a lot of the diversity stems from um, so like I said the along locus and literally what that does is it extends this carbon chain on this methionine uh, amino acid before it goes into the glucosinolate pathway. And we can think of this diversity um, mainly looked at in Brassica and Arabidopsis species and their close relatives um, in terms of like three to four C majority compounds. And in, Brassic and in Brassica, they have a unique three C and four C uh, where, uh, or in that lineage, they have that. Whereas in Arabidopsis, they can go from three C all the way to eight C, but they don't have an and um, ability. Uh, and so that since their profiles can be very different, um, there has been question about the origin of these MAM genes. So we know that they come from this IPMS gene, um, isopropyl malate synthase, um, and that it was a duplication that resulted in it, but we're not sure if they were independent or um, they shared origin and diversification. And if so, I'll, I think this is the one that the literature hints at, um, we're not sure how this, we're not sure how this happens. Uh, and the kind of duplications that are important um, in this case are tandem duplications or near duplications, uh, gene transpositions, um, and whole genome duplications. And, and when we're thinking about a transition from a primary me metabolic gene to a uh, specialized metabolite or a secondary metabolite, um, these certain genes, they're bound by uh, what we call dosage, uh, dosage constraints. Um, and so a gene that has more harsher dosage constraint would exhibit purifying selection, um, potentially based off of something like genomic stoichiometry. So uh, we like to think about cake in this case. So if you're making a cake, um, certain 
ingredients in the cake, you can double. So like sugar, for example, if you double the amount of sugar, you get a sweeter cake. If you double, maybe double the amount of eggs, you get maybe a denser cake. Um, but if you double the amount of salt, you get a salty cake. And no one likes a salty cake. So <laughs> I'm sorry if I just shaded you because you like salty cake, but, um, uh, but it's important, you know, and everything is cake. So I'm sorry if I triggered you here with um, the everything is cake meme. But the, um, uh, in this case, genomes, or at least your genes, can also be cake, uh, or at least thought of that way. Okay. <laughs> so the goals of this study are to characterize the role different gene duplication types have played in the expansion of this gene family and the origin of NAM, um, and place these understandings uh, in the context of phylogeny um, and a broader phylogeny than they have been thought of before. So my analysis, we use a phylogenomic synteny network analysis that combines synteny information, so this is the address of the gene, as well as um, phylo phylogeny information, and combines these two information types to get a better understanding of overall um, evolutionary trajectory. Um, we used uh, genomes within the uh, Brassicaceae as well as um, the Cleomaceae, so three in the Cleomaceae and then three outgroup genomes. Um, to do this, we also have to pay attention to what the uh, domains are for these different uh, gene, for this gene family. Um, and IPMS and MAM are united by having this HMGL-like pyruvate carboxylase. So the transition from IPMS was um, still retained this gene, and uh, this is what does that um, adding addition uh, function. Um, but in IPMS, they also have this leucine allosteric dimer domain that connects um, two of the um, in two of the proteins from IPMS into a homodimer. So uh, when doing our phylogeny, we do see two distinct groups: one for IPMS and one for all MAM. So that's good. Uh, so MAM has a single origin, which is what we expect um, at um, beta. And then we see IPMS. Uh, ha, ha, and then we see three distinct clusters. So one for IPMS, one for MAM, um, and one novel and one novel uh, uh, cluster what, that we're calling uh, MAM transposed. This, um, when we look, zoom in a little closer here, um, we see that there is actually a bit of discrepancy. So most genes fall into one cluster or the another, um, and, but there are certain genes here that show um, some uh, dual relationship and they happen to be found in the Cleomacy. Um, so let's take a, a closer look at what's happening here. So in the Cleomacy, um, zooming in, we see that the ancestral mam locus um, has experienced uh, some rela uh, relaxation of gene dosage and can maintain a, uh, a number of tandem duplicates. So um, with the assumption that at the beta duplication, that's where you got it. So um, since the beta of duplication, some amount of subfunctionalization has occurred. And so we can see local duplications being allowed at this locus now. Um, though you may have noticed we have a leucine dimer domain, which is not supposed to be the case or is definitely not the case in um, the Brassicaceae, um, the loss of which is, is considered to be a critical step in MAM. So we don't actually know um, how this has been functionally characterized or if, this, um, if these genes are actually involved in glucosinolate biosynthesis at all because people haven't directly looked at that. Uh, the loss of the MAM-like um, gene ancestors. So here in the Cleome violacea genome, we see losses and gains, and this is common at the, this kind of tandem duplication and loss um, is very common at um, the population level in the Brassicaceae. So we're seeing that the MAM locus in, um, in, the, Cleom in the Cleomacy is acting similarly to, um, or at least in the Cleome violacea, is acting similarly to what we expect in the Brassicaceae. Then following the TH alpha polypody event, uh, duplication occurs in the IPMS locus. So think of IPMS as our salt. It only wants to duplicate when you have the full recipe getting duplicated. Um, so in this case, you do get a duplication of salt, but only to um, a total copy number of two. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> um, and then the, uh, uh, but the uh, MAM locus does not duplicate in this case. And in fact, we see, um, yeah, so in fact, we see a loss, um, a, 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 almost a compensatory loss 
uh, um, at the, or it is a compensatory loss, not all, almost like, um, at the MAM locus. So now you have a total dosage of four. So we're seeing four genes total here, four genes total here. Uh, just in this case, when you've gotten two IPMS genes, that means you could only have two of the, uh, two of the MAM genes. Um, and then in um, Terranea, we actually see five. So, um, but yeah, I just said, oh, it needs four uh, dosage because you're interacting with IPMS. Well, in fact, this fifth one has lost, um, due to transposition, has lost this leucine dimer domain um, and, and has allowed um, for this gene to escape um, and be maintained in um, the genome. And this isn't just a pseudogene. Um, previous studies that actually showed this gene specifically is highly expressed in the leaf tissue as compared to the other MAM genes. So it's definitely doing something um, in the plant leaf uh, and is potential um, innovation. Okay, so then uh, quickly, I'm going to go ahead and try and compare that to the um, Brassicaceae. Uh, Brassicaceae is a lot more complicated, so I'm going to try and uh, be as clear as possible. Um, the uh, just telling you what we've already talked about. So IPMS locus duplicates in response to a whole genome duplication alone. That's our salt. Um, and this was at the beta duplication event. And we can see that here where our outgroups have one um, and, and have zero MAM loci. Uh, and then the tandem duplicates um, are found um, after some subfunctionalization, even with um, the leucine A-dimer domain. Um, and then at TH alpha, the MAM locus, uh, um, appears to be tied to IPMS dosage um, and a gene transposition with uh, that loses, uh, a gene transposition that has lost this leucine domain um, allows for the escape from that dosage constraint. Okay, so then in the Brassicaceae, we see similar um, that at alpha, IPMS duplicates, our salt duplicates when we double the recipe, but, uh, and subsequently as well, you see these fours, fives, and six, these are um, more recent polypoid species or species that have a uh, maybe a mesopolypoid event in the case of the um, Brassicae. You also see some exceptions, um, some due to genomes and some that are just seem to be novel subfunctionalizations of IPMS, which could be um, very exciting from a um, phenotypic point of view. I don't know what that's doing there. Um, but uh, then going, uh, going forward, we also see that without the um, leucine dimer domain, the MAM, the MAM locus duplicates readily. Um, and so what does this tell us? So at all of these, we do see duplications in the long MAM locus. And this can be, um, especially here in the um, lineage two and in the Brassicae where we see uh, many times over duplicated, each of these loci potentially um, diverging and having uh, contributing to the phenotypes we see in Brassica glucosimulate production. Uh, in, in that case, um, we can estimate that the loss of leucine dimer domain um, occurred after the alpha duplication, why it didn't duplicate at alpha, um, and that all diversification um, can, and that the key innovation of the glucosinolate diversification can be directly tied to this loss of this leucine dimer domain. Um, it has uh, long been considered that glucosinolate diversity is a key innovation of um, the Brassicaceae, um, but I think here is a, a good example of a mechanism uh, for that. Without the leucine um, domain, uh, novel trans, uh, transpositions are retained more frequently, both pseudogenes as well as um, functional conserved genes. And the most strong example is of this whole locus that has a shared. We think we, there's probably more of these types of clusters, syntenic clusters. We just didn't have the sampling in like lineage three to see that. Uh, so in conclusion, um, the uh, MAM across the Brassicaceae and Cleomacy have shared origin and their diversity is driven by several duplication types. Uh, the presence of the leucine dimer domain at the ancestral MAM locus may constrict the expansion of MAM to a shared dosage with IPMS. The Cleomacy serves as a window, um, and this is really cool that since this is the first time we've really included the Cleomacy in these types of studies, um, this serves as a window into the evolution of early MAM in the Brassicaceae as a post-beta uh, family. 
So in future directions, we'd love to increase the genomic sampling in families like the Cleomaceae, but also in other post-beta families like the Caperaceae and some others, um, so more genomes, uh, and then explore the effects of gene duplication on other critical glucosinolate pathway genes, such as uh, cytochromes, which were looked at um, uh, in the Edger paper, um, but just to explore them a little deeper. Okay, all right, if you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you for coming to my talk.